you to let that go on the inside of you. Quit trying to tell God what you want to do. You don't even know yourself anyway. He knows you. All right? Let's read that 13th verse again and you'll see it. And he goeth up into a mountain and calleth unto him whom he would. Do you understand that? If he wants to call you and give you a certain thing, he will. And if he don't, he won't. You can't make him do it. But if you are sure that you will be faithful, he will promote you some way. But you may not know anything about it at all until the moment it comes. I never did. I didn't know God was going to promote me of doing anything until it came. He does these things and gives to people whom he wants to. He wants to. Let's read that last sentence one more time. Calleth unto him whom he would, and they came unto him. I wish I'd have come every time. I rebel sometimes. I'll get you in trouble with God for sure. And he ordained twelve that they should be with him and that he might send them forth to preach. Always remember this, my brother and sister. All through the New Testament, preaching and teaching comes before the healing. When the Lord went to the synagogue, he went in there to teach and to preach the gospel, then to heal. Verse 15. Verse 14. He sent them forth to preach and to have power and to have power to heal diseases. Everybody say plural. Everybody say diseases. Everybody say that means mine. And you better believe it. You can read, can't you? And to have power to heal diseases and to cast out devils. Glory to God. Power to heal diseases. Well, I used to didn't have power on me to heal diseases. Said Brother Noble, what do you mean? Do you heal them? No, I don't heal them. God gives his power to heal diseases to people. Gave his power to heal diseases. Gave his power to heal diseases and power to cast out devils. Power. God gave his power. He puts his power on somebody. And usually it won't last very long. But when he gives it to somebody, like he called the twelve on top of the mountain, whom he would, when he gives it to you, he gives it to you. If you'll be faithful, he'll give it to you forever. And I ministered to him for several years. Several years. I had no earthly idea that God would ever do such a thing for me. Me being coming out of a business executive world, helping build the First Baptist Church. You ought to see the First Baptist Church in Indianapolis, Indiana, where I live, that I helped build. It looks like a college. It's so big. You don't look like a church. It looks like a college. We have our own basketball court. In the church. In the church. We have our own dining room in the church. We have a chef every Thursday night to come and cook dinner. And people in the church come and have fellowship together. And boy, is he a cook. We have a waiting room in the church, about as half as big as this church. It's furnished with French provincial furniture and a grand piano and all that stuff just for people to go in and wait until the service starts. <laughs> Can you imagine how I felt coming out of that church, going into a little teeny Pentecostal church and working at the city dump?
Yeah, sometimes my flesh would get to me. Sometimes it would. I, oh, sometimes. One day I was working over to the city dump, and I, I'd been over praying for this great big fat woman. She weighed like 350 pounds. She was in her bed sick, and it was bugs was in her bed with her. And it stunk so bad I couldn't, I couldn't stand it. I was praying for her and started gagging. Well, I, my, people, my, my folks had always taught me that it wasn't nice, very nice to gag in people's face. <laughs> and so as much grit as I've got, I says, well, I will not be denied, bless God, forever. I know God loves this woman. Well, I think he does. <laughs> Couldn't hardly tell she was human. She weighed about 350 pounds in bed. I don't believe the sheets had been changed in six months. Slick. I'm talking about slick, dirty. Bugs and roaches in the bed with her. And I reached out and I started praying for her. When I did, I couldn't stand it. The odor was so strong, I couldn't stand it. And I started gagging. And then it started nice and over a sick person's bed and go, oh. <laughs> I'm not going to look at Brother Ken because he's probably saying, oh my God. When I speak at Ram, I don't look at Brother Hagin either half the time. <laughs> and I stand over, the, stand over the bed. I said, I will not be denied. I know God loves this woman. So I just boldly, I just got enough grit about me. I'm not going to leave this woman like you're in this miserable mess in the arms of the, of the devil. I just said, I will not be denied. Satan, you're a liar. And I knew I couldn't stand it otherwise. So I just held my nose. And she said, Jesus bless this woman. <laughs> Jesus bless this woman. Jesus bless this woman. Jesus, bless this woman, Jesus. <laughs> if you, well, if, if you can't do something one way, then do it another way. God's got all kinds of ideas. I've just been through that mess, you know. And walked to come out of that mess, you know, and walked, just walked across the street in a slab house. Well, a room made out of slabs, two little old rooms made out of slabs with some Lee College boys. We got any Church of God people here tonight? Raise the Church of God? Anybody at all? Well, you know about the Pioneers for Christ? You don't know about that. Pioneers for Christ is a bunch of young people that Lee College has in Cleveland, Tennessee. Spirit-filled little Church of God teenagers in, on the college campus called Pioneers for Christ. And that's exactly what it is. Pioneers for Christ. Brother, they go out and pioneer anything. Sweetest bunch of kids, and I got to working with them. They found this woman under a tree with about three children. Well, I mean, Bible school students. We college Bible school students or my Bible school. They don't have any money to build a house with. But where there's a will, there's a way. They go, to the, they go to the sawmill. She'd been sleeping under a tree for three nights. They go to the sawmill, started getting, and asked the sawmill to give them some slabs for this woman that had three children, had some little children sleeping under a tree. So the sawmill gave them to them, and they'd haul them down there. And the, and the boys just got together and built two rooms. I mean, they just built two rooms the best they could, you know. You could throw a cat through the wall. <laughs> <laughs> this woman little children was living in there and I walked in there to pray for them. And I walked in there, 40,000 flies in there. The air was thick. <laughs> everywhere. I mean, they were everywhere. And me walked in there, the tailor made a suit and a Cadillac sitting outside from the First Baptist Church where everybody smells good. Just come out of that stinking house across the street, you know. This little bitty girl walks up to me about this high, holding a milk bottle. Filthiest thing I've ever seen in my life. Fly swimming all around. Had about that much milk in it. She, I, I just walked around to pray for him. She looked up at me and she says, Mister, this is all the milk that our baby has got. 
We don't have any food. The Spirit of God that lives in me jumped. I choked up. I couldn't stand it. I walked around her. I went outside. I looked up to heaven. I said, God, is this what I get for leaving the First Baptist Church? Is this my ministry? I said it. And Peter fell into a trance, a trance on the housetop. He saw a vision come down from heaven. The vision came three times to him. And the voice came down from heaven. He said, slay and eat, son. Slay and eat. He said, not so, Lord. Nothing coming around for me. Be in my mouth. Anything I make, don't call common or unclean. Get up. Go with them. Nothing doubting. That's when he preached the gospel to the Gentiles and the Holy Ghost fell in the place. I guess by like it is here now. John on the Isle of Patmos said, on the Lord's day, I heard a voice I heard a voice on the Lord's day. John. John. Write what you see. Send it to the seven churches which are in Asia. He said, I heard a voice on the Lord's day. John said, behind me, I heard a great voice on the Lord's day. And I said, God. Is this my ministry? I heard a voice come down from heaven and say to me, Son, if I can trust you here, I'll promote you. What are you going to do about it? They need some milk, son. What are you going to do about it? I said, I'm, I'm sorry, Jesus. I'm sorry, Jesus. I'm going to go buy the, I'm going to go buy the kids some milk and some food and bring it into them. And the Lord said, softly, tell me then. Tell me you did. Nearly all Christians have good intentions. And half of them never do nothing. Well, Jesus, I meant to help those little kids in Pensacola that didn't have no food. I mean, you know, Lord, I love you. I wanted to help those, Jesus. But, uh, you know, Lord, he said, yeah, don't tell me. You were too busy for the gospel. Too busy. You were too busy. Well, I was busy too. I was a slave to my corporation. I was making five or six thousand dollars a week. I had four Cadillacs in my driveway. Everything I had paid for. I was a young, sharp man on top of the world. And one night I come out of a stockholders meeting. Started saying a little small Baptist prayer. And the Spirit of God swept in my car, stayed on me for an hour and a half, and melted me, and melted me, and melted me, and melted me. And Jesus said, Come and follow me, and I'll make you become fishers of men. Son, I want you to come and follow me. I said, God, I'm an executive lord in the business world. What could you possibly do with me? Jesus, what could you possibly do with me? He said, come and follow me, and I will make you to become fishers of men. Come and follow me. I said, Lord, 
what could you possibly do with me? Son, I said, no, let take this one. Son, come and follow me. And one day I'll set you on a high hill and the light of God will shine down from you to many men on this earth. I said, oh, really? Really, Jesus? You would cause me to bring people to heaven? Come and follow me and be faithful and I'll show you. I did, and he does. Glory be to Jesus forevermore. But I never thought he'd ever do this for me, though. I never thought, I never dreamed he would do anything like this for me. But a number of years ago, one cold, wintry Christmas night, I went to Pennsylvania to speak at a fancy Christmas banquet. Marvel Hayes is going to come and give a business executive and give his life story. They were standing around the wall. I was speaking. I got through and I started giving an invitation. The Lord said, speak on deliverance, son. Speak on deliverance. Tell them the devil causes diseases. Speak on deliverance. I've been speaking about 10 or 15 minutes on deliverance and how the devil causes diseases and Jesus wants to heal you. And while I'm speaking, there was a businessman who looked like a very distinguished looking man. He gets up out of his seat and starts walking right down the aisle like this out towards me. And I thought to myself, I'm not true. I wonder what he's walking down here for. I'm not true. And he walked right there, and I said, what do you want, sir? Well, he said, I never did know, I never did know what was wrong with me until you started speaking about 10 or 15 minutes ago on deliverance and the devil is his own. I'm a Pentecostal. He's a Pentecostal leader of that town. And he said, uh, sir, he said, I've been deaf for 30 years. Of course, you know. Many Pentecostals believe that a Pentecostal can't have a devil. Here's a Pentecostal leader is deaf. Here's a Pentecostal leader is deaf. He's had a devil for 30 years. He's had a devil for 30 years. He's a Pentecostal leader. His ears has been deaf for 30 years. There's all kinds of devils. The Lord said to me, cast that deaf devil out of him. I walked over to him, put my hands on his ears. I said, you foul, deaf devil in Jesus' name. Come out of him! The moment I said that, he fell flat on the floor and both ears popped open. And he come to in a few minutes. I started laughing and he's laughing and he's laughing. I said, sir, what are you laughing about? He says, I never heard a watch tick before. I said, you hear a watch tick? He said, yeah. I said, you hear your watch tick? He said, yes. I thought, maybe he ought to pray for me. <laughs> you hear a watch tick? He said, yeah. He laughed and he goes, he goes, it's funny. I've looked at it for years, but never to hear it tick. He goes, tick, 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 tick. I guess if you look at it for 30 years, you know, you never heard it, and all of a sudden, all of a sudden, you're hearing it going, tick, 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 tick. He said, isn't that funny? That's the funniest sound I ever heard in my life. That's funny. Tick, 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 tick. All of a sudden, when that happened, two or three people get up and rush down the front. Says, pray for me. Three or four over here, pray for me. They started coming. Fifty, sixty of them. Pray for me. Huh. I didn't know this. I didn't know God was going to do this for me. Never had any idea. I reached out like this to pray for them. I reached out like this to pray for them. And I did. They fell flat on the floor. And I just act like a... And I, I, I don't know why I did it. I, I just did it. 
I just stepped off like this, started going out through the congregation like this, and they were coming out wanting me to pray for them. I just started doing like this, and they started falling on the floor, back between the seats, falling everywhere, back between the seats, back between the seats, falling out, just falling out everywhere. And uh, I walked around about five minutes, walked around through the auditorium, this ballroom where this at, and I looked around. It looked like they brought a machine gun and shot the whole congregation. <laughs> There's a no real old, must have been, he must have been 80 years old, no white headed Pentecostal missionary there. He walked up to me. I'm standing there looking around you like this. They all looked like they were dead. <laughs> and power was in my hands like you would not believe. Power. Power was in my hands. I could just act like I was going to pray for somebody. Just, I mean, it come like a flood that night. Oh, God. It was in my hands. My hands was clean. My hands felt funny. Feeling a little funny right now. <laughs> oh, if they got, they've been feeling funny ever since that night sometimes, you know. And this old missionary said to me, he said, young man, he said, I haven't seen any power like this in 55 years. He said, in the old Pentecostal early days of the church, he said, I... We used to see power come in like this. He says, I haven't seen any power like this in 55 years. My God, my God, my God. I haven't seen any power like this in 55 years. And uh, I could have told him real easy. I never saw it before in my life. <laughs> I never saw it. I never saw it. <laughs> but the beautiful part was, the beautiful part was, listen closely, I saw it that night. And I've been seeing it in different kinds of phases and different kinds of strength ever since then. God put it in my hands that night to lay hands on people in public assembly so they could be healed. That's God forevermore. And I've been seeing all kinds of things happen. I've laid my hands on people with one kidney and they get two. All kinds of operations on the inside of you. In the book of Acts, chapter 19, verse 11, the Bible says, And God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul. And God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul. Acts 19, verse 11. The Bible says that God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul. Not just healing. The last 11 words that Jesus said before we went back to heaven, according to Mark, they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. And then he said, God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul. That night in Pennsylvania, I never dreamed that God would ever do anything like that for me, but he did. And if you'll be faithful to him, you can't make God do something, but if you'll be faithful to him, uh, anytime God wants to do anything for you, he'll just do it, that's all. He does it because he's God and because he wants to. He calls to himself and he gives special ministries to himself to whom he will. Do you understand that? Remember, Jesus went to the top of the mountain and called men to himself whom he would. Laying on of hands in Jesus' name is for all believers and you should do it all the time. Sometimes God will call a man to the side and he'll give him special power in his hands. And he'll lay hands on people and all kinds of things will happen. I just happen to be one of those men, that's all. I'm not the only one, I just happen to be one of them. I've laid hands on people and the person didn't feel a thing and get totally operated on on the inside. And then sometimes God will lay them out on the floor, just lay them out on the floor and operate on them. And sometimes lay their hands on them and they won't feel a thing and start to the car and all of a sudden they get healed out in the parking lot. Lay hands on a little boy the other night and his feet was backwards. I'm talking about Brother Ken, his feet was the other way. Never, never could walk. I laid hands up on him, told his mother, I says, now thank the Lord for it. She put him to bed that night, took him out, nothing didn't happen. I laid hands up on him, put him to bed that night, got him up the next morning, took him to the breakfast table. And then looked down while she was eating breakfast, and all of a sudden she just looked down, just all of a sudden, just all of a sudden, and his feet were turned the right way. 
brought him back to service the next night. On 24 hours later, brought him back to service the next night. They laid hands up on him. No manifestation at all. But about 12 hours later, sitting at the breakfast table, his feet went. What? So, how did, Brother Norville, are you serious? You may not get healed if I don't get it tonight. Hey, listen closely. I'm getting ready to lay hands on you. Listen to me closely. It's the anointing that breaks the yoke. It's the anointing that breaks the yoke. The only responsibility I have is to get my hands on you in Jesus' name. I'm not responsible for saying some long prayer. I'm responsible for getting you to yield yourself to God and getting that anointing of God's divine healing power to go in your little body. And that power goes in your body. If you'll just thank God for it, you may get the supernatural manifest. Many of you will get it tonight. You may get on the way home. Your crooked leg may stretch out in the morning to the breakfast table. Many times it does. It's that anointing that goes inside of you, see. Receive it with thanksgiving. Don't ever speak one word against it. Always thank God for it. Don't please, I beg of you, don't speak one word against it. Just thank the Lord for it. And if the congregation will pray and help me and help your brothers and sisters that's sick. Now this is for physical healing only. See, don't come for anything else. Please don't come for anything else because the, the power will flow stronger if you'll only come for what it's meant for. This is for physical healing only. Now, I want to lay my hands on you and I want to start right over here. Well, I might as well start right here. Now, listen to me closely. If you're sick in your body or you need a miracle in your body, in your body, I want you to come and stand in line right here. Anybody in this section right here? Start over yonder if you want to. I'll take it from side to side. Stand in one straight line. This section right here come. All this section right here come. All this section right here come. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Single line all the way across the front of the church. Single line. Not a double line now. Don't get behind anybody. Don't get behind anybody. Get in a single line. Single line. Do not stand behind anybody at all. Because if God chooses to lay you out on the floor and operate on you, let him do it. I mean, just be open to whatever he wants to do for you. Just be open to whatever God wants to do for you. But the main part of it is you believe and thank him for it. Only believe. Only believe and thank him for it. All right? We got some more space here. What about this section over here? Anybody in this section over here? Smaller section. We have a little bit of space left here. Now, ushers, ushers, come over here. One of you be real sharp now. Get me a single line here and make the rest of them stand back there in line in the aisle. Just get me a single line. Blessed be the name of the Lord. You have a right to be healed. Healing is for you. This is one way God heals people. It's not the only way. God heals people through your own faith. God can heal you out in the congregation. God can heal you by somebody reading a book to you. God can heal you by you quoting scriptures in the Bible and saying they're mine, they're mine, they're mine, they're mine. All day long and all day long, week and month after month, they're mine. God can heal you many different ways, but this is one way that you can receive anointing. All of those ways are by faith. This is by anointing and by faith only. Now listen, men. Listen. One straight line, men. Ushers, ushers. One straight line. Nobody behind somebody else. One straight line. Now come on, boys. One straight line. Get them in a straight line. Straight line. Nobody behind anybody else. Straight means opposite from crooked. Straight line. Blessed be the name of the Lord. One straight line. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Blessed be God forever. All right, now we've got one straight line ready to go. Now listen to me. 
Congregation, listen to me closely. You play a big part in the amount of power that comes in your church. More prayers goes up to heaven. More thanksgiving, thanksgiving part. The stronger sometimes it comes. I don't control it. I'm only a vessel just like Brother Ken and just like the other pastors here or just like you are. I'm only a vessel. But the Lord's put it in my hands. You understand that? It can come. It can come in any amount of power that he chooses to. Now then, ushers, I want to talk to you. Ushers, give me, give me the attention of three or four real sharp, quick and thank ushers. Because you may, be, be, you may have to be that way. Now, boys, if the anointing comes on me in a supernatural way, sometimes it comes in waves like the wind. But it may only stay 10 or 15 seconds and lift again, come back to normal again, just the average anointing. If it comes on me real strong and heavy and it gushes to my hands and the hot substance, or whenever it comes to my hands, it gushes in me. I'm going to get my hands on them just as fast as I can. And if I run, you run with me. Because I can just touch one and that power go in them. See, that power, listen to me closely, that power can go in them and, whoosh, and give them a new kidney that quick. As quick as you can bat your eye. As quick as you can bat your eye. You can get operated on on the inside of you. Now, I can't make God do that or not make him do it. You know what I mean? Now, I just do it kind of normal. If God wants to operate that way all night long, that's fine with me. But now your responsibility is, your act of coming down here shows that you believe God on a certain level. Now then, the only requirement that God has for you since you've come to his altar is thank him for it. Just thank him for it. Don't try to try to believe and try to do this to believe and try to make, make it happen. No, no, don't try to make nothing happen. Just stand right there in the presence of Almighty God and just thank God for it. Just thank God for it. When I lay my hands on that little girl in the wheelchair, honey, she might become normal the moment I touch her. She might remain just like she is the moment I touch her, but the moment I touch her and agree with you and you believe God or you wouldn't have her here. It's an act of faith that God likes. Open up your mouth the moment I touch her. Open up your mouth and start thanking God. Thank you, Lord, because my daughter is normal. Thank God forever. Why? All right, because of this. Now listen to, to me closely. I'm going to start praying for you. Because of this. Laying on of hands is a doctrine of the church. The doctrine means that no man has a right to change it. It's a doctrine that God has set in there. Being baptized in water after being born again is a doctrine of the church. You're supposed to be baptized in water after you're born again. Laying on of hands is a doctrine of all churches. Some of them don't do it, but it's a doctrine anyway. And this won't go over, but it's a truth anyway. Every church in the world that does not have the doctrine of laying on of hands and obeying Jesus when he said, lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Every church in the world that does not do that, they are some phase out of God's will. Because it's a doctrine, and I can prove it to you. I won't start teaching that. That's a whole sermon in itself. It's a doctrine of the church, a doctrine that God has put in the scriptures. Laying on of hands is a doctrine of the church. It's a doctrine to lay hands on a young man when you're ordained to preach and send him out. It's a doctrine to lay hands on sick people to be healed. It's a doctrine to lay hands on people that needs a special miracle from God. The Bible says that God himself wrought, performed special miracles by the hands of Paul. Special miracles. That means he'll create something for you if you need it in your body. Now then, congregation, Everybody in the building say, Jesus, Jesus is, the healer. is the healer. 
Say, Jesus, Jesus, I thank you in advance advance. for healing my brothers and sisters. sisters. I thank you, Jesus, Jesus. for allowing your healing power power. to go in their bodies bodies. to bring a healing and a cure to them. We love you, Jesus. Jesus. Now start praying, congregation. Start praying. My hands are going to this way. I thank the Lord for it. Thank the Lord for it, honey. Thank the Lord for it. In Jesus' name, thank the Lord for it. In Jesus' name, receive a healing. Receive a healing in Jesus' name. Receive a healing. Receive a healing in Jesus' name. Yeah, that's right. That's right. There it is. There it is. Receive your healing in Jesus' name. Receive your healing in Jesus' name. Receive your healing. Receive your healing in Jesus' name. Receive. Yeah, there it is, young man. Go right in. Go right in. Let it go in. In Jesus' name, let it go in. Let it go in. In Jesus' name, let it go in. Keep on praying, congregation. Let's get stronger. Keep on praying. Keep on praying. In Jesus' name. Keep on praying, keep on praying, keep on praying, keep on praying, keep on praying. In Jesus' name, may God flow like a river. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, flow, let the anointing of God flow like a river. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, let it flow. Let it go in you, let it go in you, let it go in you, let it go in you. In Jesus' name, let it go in you. It'll heal you. Let it go in you. Let it go in you. Special miracle in Jesus' name. Special miracle in Jesus' name. Thank the Lord for it. Special miracle in Jesus' name. Special miracle. Yeah, that's right, honey. Special miracle in Jesus' name. 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 There it goes. Let it go in there. Let it go in there. Special miracle in Jesus' name. Special miracle. That's right. That's right. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Special miracle in Jesus' name. Special miracle in Jesus' name. Special miracle in Jesus' name. In Jesus name. I look like I say it to this one. Lord, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Bless God forevermore. Keep on praying. Keep on praying. Keep on praying. Put your microphone and sing, Rise and be healed, till we get another line going. Rise and be healed. Sing about Jesus, the healer. Sing with him. Let faith arise in your soul. Rise and be He will cleanse you and me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Keep my microphone on. Blessed be the name of the Lord God forever. Single line now, men. Single line. No doubles. Single line. Come quickly. I Come am. Bless God forever. Single line, single line. Rise and be healed in Jesus' name. Come on, man. Come on, man. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Receive your healing. Receive your healing. Receive your healing. Receive your healing. God for it. Thank God for it. Thank God for it. Thank the Lord for it. Thank the Lord for it. Thank God for it. Thank the Lord for the healing power. Thank God for it. Jesus name. Thank the Lord for it. Thank the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Thank God.
God for him, Jesus name. Thank God for him, Jesus name. Thank the Lord, thank the Lord for your healing power. Saturate him, Lord. Thank you for your healing power. Jesus. 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 Yeah. 
Bless the name of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. Stretch your hands toward heaven right now. Say, Heavenly Father, please forgive me of all sin. Wash me clean and white as snow. I love you, Jesus. When I take my last breath on this earth, I want to spend all eternity in heaven. Write my name in heaven tonight. Write my name in heaven tonight. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I am yours. Yours. From this night forward. From this night forward. I'll raise my hands forever. I'll raise my hands forever. And worship you only. And worship you only. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I am yours, Jesus. I am yours, Jesus. Say, Jesus. Jesus. Let the angels, let the, angels let, the Holy Spirit, let the Holy Spirit bless my life, bless my life and, teach me the ways of God and teach me the ways of God that I could do something for Jesus, I do something for Jesus that I could reach out, I could reach out to help people. To help people. Lay your hand on your own heart. Say, Lord, touch my heart. Lord, touch my heart. Put your other hand on your head. Say, Lord, touch my mind. Lord, touch my mind. Put the mind of Christ in me. Put the mind of Christ in me. Remove any stone out of my heart. Remove any stone out of my heart. Let me have a heart of flesh. Have a heart of flesh. Give me a heart of compassion. Give me a heart of compassion. For those in the world that needs help. Lord, I know the gospel will set anybody free. Help me to obey the gospel. And to reach out. And help someone. help someone. Help me think straight. Help me think straight. With my mind. With my mind. Teach me. Teach me. To put first things first. Put first things first. Teach me, Jesus. Teach me, Jesus. That everything I do. That everything I do. Is done by decision. Is done by decision. Help me, Lord. Give me the mind of Christ. That I can put the gospel first. And the Bible says, if I put the gospel first, if I bring good news to people and help them, the Bible says that God would add all things to me. He'll add health to me. He'll add joy to me. He'll add finances to me. That my family could have plenty. That I could have money left over to help spread the gospel. He'll add everything to me. Jesus, give me the mind of Christ. In me. And I will make the right decisions. And let me have the peace of God. Pass it all understanding. I love you, Jesus. I worship you, Jesus. I lift my hands to you. You are the Savior. You are the healer. Jesus, you are the miracle worker. I'm glad I'm saved. In fact, I'm so glad. I think I'll shout. Well, shout then. Glory to God, thank you, Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Thank God I'm saved. Thank God I'm saved. Thank God I'm saved. Thank God I'm saved. Blessed be the name of the Lord. God forever!